you started or not? Yes, yes, started. Okay, so here it is. Guys, from today onwards, almost like uh, another next two weeks, we will go with uh, completely practical mode only. So make sure your laptops or desktops. Okay, so what are your system, your PC? Because um, most of you are laptops only. So check your laptop configuration. Already you checked it. Okay, so what are the your CPU? CPU must be 64 bit. Okay, must be 64 bit. If it is not a 64 bit, follow will occur. Okay, so compulsory 64 bit is required. Your uh, laptop configuration next to RAM must be above 4 GB. Actually, it is 8 GB only. Oh, 8 GB. Okay. It's a uh, minimum 8 GB. Okay, minimum 8 GB. In case, if in case your RAM 4 GB, try to upgrade to 8 GB. That is my suggestion. But, but if in case you are unable to upgrade because uh, you are in a, some remote place. Um, then the nearest city or uh, usually big cities only we can able to upgradations right online it is not suggestible because of it's very it's uh, not very easy to uh, upgrade by ourselves even though myself I don't do upgradation of laptop I don't suggest in that one because of you there is a lot of things you have to verify uh, regarding to RAM RAM, RAM model, RAM types also there, voltage wise types also there. You're based on your processor, based on your motherboard. Okay, so you have to open your laptop. Again, you have to check the RAM. Okay, so based on your previous RAM, you have to purchase the new RAM. But my suggestion is, if you are able to upgrade, okay, if you are able to upgrade, so check based on your CPU, Add 8 GB to it directly. So it is cost is not extra. Okay, because 4 GB is around 2000 kind of stuff. 8 GB is around less than 8, 4000. Means 3 to 4000 rupees only. Earlier it is only 3000, but now the cost increases, right? So obviously it is around 3 to 4000 only. Okay, around 3000, you will get a 8 GB RAM. 4 GB RAM is around 2000. 2 to 3000, it is around 2000. Okay. So, better upgrade like this. If you are using a old type of RAM, means DDR3 RAMs, little cost uh, is there than a 4 GB. Okay. Next, if anyone, I think one of the one person having a less RAM, like a less than. 4 GB RAM person is also there, 2 GB RAM person is also there. So compulsory, check it like a compulsory required a 4 GB RAM. To, if you want to do practical compulsory required to upgrade it to 4 GB RAM. Okay. 2 GB RAM is, uh, you, you can't do anything. So currently just uh, go through what we are discussed it. So as soon as possible, with the RAM. so minimum very minimum minimum to minimum 4 GB okay minimum is 8 GB 8 GB is a better you can able to do practically above 8 GB good okay if you are having a, a 4 GB then try to upgrade less than 4 GB try to upgrade to at least 4 or a 6 GB for example you have a 2 GB RAM try to add a 4 GB RAM at least, least to least. I'm telling about a least to least. It is all depends upon your 
this whole depends upon your current laptop configuration means your CPU configuration and your laptop laptop uh, slots depends upon that you can able to upgrade. For example, my mine is a i5 processor third generation. Mine is a i5 processor third generation. So it, we can able to upgrade up to 16 GB. OK, if I have a i5 processor second generation. I can't go with the uh, second generation or first generation. I can't go with uh, more than 8 GB. If I have a i3 processor, first generation itself, I can go up to 8 GB. I can go up to 8 GB only. I have a i3 processor, a third generation or fourth, five, five generation. I can go up to 16 GB. I have another uh, desktop with i3 processor. It's a uh, ninth generation. I can go up to 32 GB. OK, so like that. So RAM is a more crucial part in our practicals and uh, in the daily working purpose. Can see it. So this is compulsory. Check it. So last time. Um, OK, and also morning. Uh, actually, I have to send this thing yesterday only. No problem. Today you do all the work. Okay. Last time you send a very good way. Like, what is your uh, configuration and all? This is a good configuration. I5 processor. Eight generation is also good. So, um, eight GB RAM. This. 4 GB RAM. The 4 GB RAM. Eight GB RAM, 4 GB RAM. This is 2 GB RAM. So fourth generation CPU. Okay. And it is uh, Windows 7 is okay. It is a um, Fourth generation means it is old laptop, very old laptop. You can able to run this. Okay, I didn't open anything. Just go through your processor. Just put it in a Google. Then you will get this kind of stuff. Okay. Product specifications kind of stuff. Okay, that's it. Go to this intel.com. Two cores, four threads. DDR3 model. So you have to check with this model. 13, 33 kind of stuff. And as well as can upgrade up to 16 GB. If it is very old laptop and it is not supporting normally kind of stuff like your already laptop become a weak. So it's OK, so better uh, you can later you can uh, upgrade. OK, or at least try to upgrade to 8 GB. My suggestion is add 8 GB to it. Or uh, directly a 2, 4 GB or a 1, 8 GB. So you will be able to upgrade. But my another one is like see this model is suitable. So how to upgrade a RAM compulsory. Um, check your existing RAM. So based on that only based on that parameters better to add a suitable RAM. So then you won't get a problems. 8 GB RAM. Some are having 12 GB RAM also. 4 GB RAM. This is a very old laptop, second generation. This also support up to 8 GB. Okay. So guys, this is it. So minimum 8 GB is required. If you have a 4 GB, I will suggest how to do it. 
So based on that, please check it. Next, RAM is if in case less than 4 GB. So try to keep it at least uh, more than 4 GB. So by adding uh, another 4 GB or uh, 8 GB. Okay. So you can easily purchase uh, this type of RAMs. It is a two eight GBs. Okay, it is two eight GBs. So, so you better to go with the one four GBs. So cost will be there. So Walder is costlier than a new one. So it is eight GB DDR four. Cost is two thousand six fifty six. But four GB DDR three L. Cost is this much. Okay. Okay, check with online uh, cost also and go with the offline cost also. So better upgrade your RAM. That's the first point. Okay, try to keep up 8 GB or more than 8 GB. Okay, if you are already having a 4 GB, you want to upgrade, add a 4 plus 8, then you will become a 12. So no need to waste. So then better make it 4 plus 8 even though my laptop came with a 4 gb ram i added 8 gb i added 8 gb so then it is become a 12 gb ram okay so if you are less than it so so try to remove or uh, add another thing okay. so this is first point so check again your configurations Wait. second last time we already told Check your virtualization kind of stuff. Go to task manager. Go to performance. CPU. Check it. Virtualization is enabled or not. Okay. Virtualization is enabled or not. Okay. Already I send a picture to you. So that's you can go through that picture also. Where I highlighted and already you know that one. So check it virtualization is enabled or not so you can check it in a task manager also okay process performance cpu cpu you can see it if it is not enabled okay enabled to task manager the task manager performance cpu then you will find virtualization is enabled or not okay if in case virtualization disabled you have to enable it So usually you don't get this kind of stuff. Sometimes even though your system is 64 bit, the virtualization is not configured. Or not available. This kind of suggestions will be there. Uh, for Windows 7, it is a little bit different. So in Windows 7, uh, if you are having a Windows 7, so try to use some applications or a comments. I will tell that one. Okay. Okay, virtualization is not available kind of stuff. You can't do anything. So simply cancel. Okay. So I'm removing this one. Just only I'm uh, if it is showing a disabled, you have to enable it in BIOS settings. So there is a way to go to bio settings. There is a way to go to bio settings. Two ways are there. So try for a try the first one. Okay. 
first one is not showing option, then you can go to the check with the second options. Two ways to go by your settings. My suggestion is second is directly we can go. Okay, so that is if in case it's showing disabled. If it is showing enable, it's okay. Good. No need to go to bio settings. Okay. So look at here. Okay, the first one is like this. So first of all, I will show you here. Go to Windows. Just go to start button. Click on start button or as Windows start button or Windows button. You can go to Windows button or a start button. Go to settings. That one. Update and um, security. They can go to update and security. Click here. So let it uh, do its take little time. So then update and security. Okay. In this one, left side, uh, this is not required. Okay, so in a left side, you can go to recovery. In left side, you can see recovery, advanced startup, restart now. Just before going to advanced startup, read these things and restart now. Okay. Recovery under recovery, so go to advanced data. So then uh, click restart now. Then automatically it take a window. The window is look like this one. Windows 10. It will show like this. This is the first window it is showing like this. Continue, use a device, troubleshoot, turn off your PC. <coughs> okay, so you have to go to troubleshoot. You have to go to after restart, it automatically restart, then go to troubleshoot. Okay, so once you go to troubleshoot, once you go to troubleshoot, <clears throat> you will show it will show advanced options kind of stuff. Yeah, command prompt startup repair UFI setting. Okay, so it is not showing here, but like this so continue troubleshoot turn off. So go to troubleshoot. So in a troubleshoot. So you have to go to advanced options like this. In a troubleshoot, reset this PC, advanced options. Be carefully do it, guys. In a troubleshoot, go to advanced options. Go to advanced options. This is the advanced options. If you go to advanced options, it will show this kind of window. OK, so just uh, only this window. Yeah, this is a kind of window it will show and advanced options. You can see system restore, system image recovery, startup repair, go back to previous build, startup settings, command prompt like this. OK, maybe the last part may be not may may, may not be shows. But these are the things it will show. But it is little different from one to another one. 
So you look at here. This is UEFA firmware settings. You can see UEFI firmware settings here. What is this UEFI firmware settings? So if, uh, this is a YouTube link, that's why. This is, it's a little clear. So you can see UEFI firmware settings. If you found this one, if you found this one, Okay. If you found this one, then good. So go to UFI firmware settings. Then it will restart automatically again. So then um, you will get a BIOS settings. Again, we'll see. So in general, if you buy any latest laptops and all, usually you don't get uh, any problems, but sometimes the old laptops don't get it. So you can go to this different, different BIOS kind of stuff, having a different type of windows guys. It is not like uh, every, every system having same window. It's not like that. So you can see it is virtualization technology enabled. You have to do little uh, uh, search because Mostly it is based on your lab system. System means BIOS manufacturer. BIOS chip, okay, based on your BIOS chip manufacturer. So windows are different. So search usually like either in advanced or a system configuration. under CPU, okay, under CPU configuration kind of stuff. So you can find, virtualization technology or Intel virtualization technology. Okay, so if it's already in a disabled, Use it disabled. So use your guys here. It is in a bio settings. Mouse won't work. Only few BIOS kind of stuff depends upon your motherboard. So only few BIOS only works with your mouse. So compulsory you have to use your arrow keys only. Up arrow, down arrow, side arrow, left arrow, right arrow kind of stuff. Okay, you have to navigate. Okay, so you have to. Use your, uh, use your uh, arrow key, go to virtualization technology, disable. So press enter, just uh, enter. It will open it with a small options, like a options. Then select enable, select enable and enter. Then once you're done, press F10 in a function key F10 is there or you can go to last uh, last one like a exit part okay so save and exit then it will restart your computer and you will get a normal screen then After restarted, restarted, verify, verify again, same thing, verify, virtualization, enable. So 
someone send a message. Screen is not visible. Now it is visible. Yes, sir. Very good. Okay, verify virtualization is enabled or not. So you can see virtualization is enabled. Okay, so look at here. This is another one. See, it is Intel virtualization technology disabled. Then you have to select enable. If mouse is working, then good. Mouse is not working. You have to use your mouse. So it's a configuration. It is in a config information configuration security. Okay. It is in advanced. It is in advanced. So it depends upon your motherboard, your chip. So different type of um, BIOS manufacturers are there. Phonics BIOS, Ad, Award, uh, or uh, Award or something is there, and uh, AMI BIOS, American Megatrend Inc. BIOS, okay, Asus related BIOS are there. So different BIOS, but mostly it is under advanced or a configuration. See, it is under advanced technologies. So this is a HP. Okay, it is a HP. It is under security in a bottom system. Something is a system security. Virtualization technology is there here. Okay, virtualization. So carefully you have to navigate. See, this is under CPU configuration, advanced CPU configuration. This is under configuration. Sometimes it is under system configuration. Sometimes under you can go to uh, advanced and processor configuration. So compulsory check where it is located. So this is a, another one. This is award software. Okay, CMOS features, advanced CMOS BIOS features. Okay, like that it is there. So purely depends upon. See, this is system configuration. So purely depends upon how, um, your system. Okay. Yes, again, I'm telling. If in case, so don't go through it. If it is not required, just close this one. This don't. If it is showing a virtualization enabled, so no need to go to BIOS setting. OK, next. If in case you are unable to see your five settings. Second way to go to BIOS setting. If in case not showing or your system is not Windows 10. In this case is go to BIOS settings. directly okay so how to go to bios settings directly without going to these many options and all okay so how to go to bios settings look at here so power of your system better power of your system you know when you are power of your system It is showing a BIOS. See, this is a different screen. Also, there. See, so when you power off your system, you shut down your system, power off your system, then just click power button. So press the power button. The power on. Just press the power on. So immediately on your screen, in a bottom of your screen, in central, in bottom of your screen, you'll get a BIOS uh, means uh, like you, it will display. 
you can see uh, there is a small display. It will be very less time, less than a minute. Okay, almost like a 15 seconds something is there. You can see that is how to go to bio setting also there. Okay, so uh, like um, sometimes it will shows setup. Okay, setup button or maybe a BIOS uh, setting button. Or you can Google it. BIOS key for your system means HP laptop. Okay, or a Lenovo laptop. Or you can search for a Dell. Depends upon what manufacturer you are there. Better to search it instead of uh, seeing in a starting. For example, I start my computer. When I press the power button, uh, currently I'm not able to see anything in a bottom. Okay, so I can't be able to see how to go to bio setting. So better to search key for a bio settings. But in generally, in generally, the BIOS keys are your delete button. So what you have to do, press the power button, press the power button and press the delete button. Okay, or keep uh, pressing one or two times of delete button. So this is the most common earlier days. Dell is a manufacturer of computers kind of stuff. That time Dell is a delete button is a enter into bio settings. That is old days. We have only one button is there that is called a delete. Later days. So many changes are occur. Your function key like a F2, F10, F12, F11. Most of the, these variants F2, F10, F11 uh, kind of stuff. Okay, so I will tell this one also. So just go to Google. Type BIOS key. For, for example, HP. So it is F10 key. Okay, in general, it is F10 key. So may may not be. Depends upon your model, it will be different. Okay. The laptops. Tell in Spriyan. So you have to tell the model also. See, model also. Better, vast row. So, you see, this is a different um, type of models. F2 or F12. Okay. For a first time users, it may confusion, but still, it is a very good thing. Okay. So, first of all, turn off your computer, make sure it everything is power off. Then, just press the power button and press the your BIOS key. BIOS key can be anything, so either F2, F10, F12, F11, okay, uh, F9, any function key it can be available, including escape. Including escape, escape also can be there. Okay, so then go to BIOS settings, you know how to do it, what to do. Okay, remaining thing is, you know what to do. So this is important is you have to go to bio settings. So go to advanced or system configuration, configuration or CPU configuration. Depends upon your bio shape. Find out various virtualization technology, enable it. Okay. I will tell there is a certain problems may occur guys. Okay, because that is not up to me. It depends upon your system. Okay, so some problems may occur. We are ready to deal with it. So what are the some problems? So why to enable I will tell but after enabling you may get this kind of problems. Okay, if it is already enabled, no problem, but you're enabling now after using of computer for a uh, three months, six months, 
or one year, five years. So obviously what happened, your longer you are using a computer. So obviously the settings are your settings and your operating system are uh, in the one kind of mode only. OK, so the problem is you will get a. Blue screen of death. Get a BSOD problem. You'll get a BSOD problem. So you may get a BSOD. So do not worry about it. Just make sure like uh, if it is. OK, you got a BSOD. And the BSOD running completed and uh, it is restarted. OK, after restarted. OK, if. No BS body again. Then no problem. If in case. If. BS body again. And definitely it is a. Problem. OK. Uh, we know that one. So just first time you got a BS body. No need to worry. Usually for Windows 10, uh, it is will be adjust. You won't give you a much problem, but if it is uh, keep coming. So one way is again, you have to go to BIOS settings. Or to solve it. The uh, one thing is. Again, go to. BIOS setting. So make sure you didn't touch any other settings except this setting. Make sure you should not touch uh, any other settings. So only this setting only are changed. Meaning is you go to BIOS settings. Revert it. So what's the setting? Just revert it. So go to the BIOS setting and uh, so virtualization technology. Disabled. Okay, so that's the thing. So you cannot do any practical. Okay, second one is you can format this means reinstall OS, but usually you won't get this kind of problem. So very less people only will get this problem that to. Um, like uh, if I if you use Windows 7 or a Windows 8, you'll get it. Even my laptop also didn't given me uh, this related fall. OK, mostly I enabled it in a starting only. OK, so for any laptop I suggest. OK, if it is uh, almost six months, one year, two years, you are already used. Your operating system not adjust with a new setting. Sometimes. Sometimes. So then uh, you will get about things. OK, so my suggestion is always back up your data is normally regularly. OK, next one is go to make sure that virtualization is enabled. If it is already enabled, no problem. If it is disabled, you have to enable it. Go to buy your settings, enable it. OK, after enabling. If in case you got a some BSOD kind of problems. OK, so suddenly after you restart your computer and suddenly you got a BSOD. If that is you will get immediately only not after one day or two day. OK, after you. After you uh, enable. The virtualization after you enable the virtualization and you restart your computer, you got a BSOD. That is because of this virtualization, so you can disable it. Or reinstall it OS or try to search in a Google. So point is better. Better to search. In Google. About it. Like this. I enabled my virtualization in my Windows, uh, which operating system Windows 10. OK, I got a BS body. Okay. But first thing is once you got a first BS body. No, don't need to worry. Just wait for a 10 15 minutes. Make it as a 100 percent. OK, uh, if it is restart automatically, OK, if it is not restarting, 
you have to forcibly restart the computer. Forcibly restart the computer. So this is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so that this is a uh, first one I told virtualization enable how to enable the virtualization. Second uh, first one is not that one. First one is check your RAM. RAM is very important here and system is 64. Your system is not 64. I can't do anything. Just try to buy new laptop or uh, practice in any 64 bit machines. Of course, we have a for diff other practicals we can do in a cloud. So Windows 10 practically can't do in a uh, cloud, but Windows servers and uh, Windows uh, servers and Linux we can do in a cloud also now. For Linux uh, infrastructure is not big challenge. But Windows 10 and Windows servers we are doing both the practicals, right? So make sure that try to make it as a uh, pro, uh, RAM is 8 GB or more. If it is a 4 GB, better to upgrade it. Better to upgrade it. If you cannot upgrade it, also I will suggest something. But you have a 2 GB, it's very difficult to do. Right. Next. Important thing is here only I'm telling. OK. How much RAM you have? Important is how much RAM you have, make sure that available your available RAM is important. Okay, for example, I have a 8 GB RAM, the available RAM is 1 GB, useless. I have a 4 GB RAM. Available RAM is uh, like uh, more than 2 GB. Very good. OK, it is purely depends upon. I have a 12 GB RAM. See, my RAM is 12 GB, but available RAM is 5.9. You can see that the available RAM is only 5.9. Understand? So make sure that check the available RAM also. the available RAM. I want minimum 4 GB RAM available minimum. Be more than 4 GB. So minimum minimum is 4 GB RAM must be available. Let's understand. Minimum 4 GB RAM must be available. If you in case you are a 8 GB and above, if your RAM is 8 GB and above, minimum 4 GB available. If less than 4 GB also, okay. But important thing is keep watching the available RAM. Okay, keep watching your available RAM. You know, some are having 8 GB, sir. I have 8 GB, but my available RAM is less than this one so okay so for example uh, i'm giving an example here okay so the pc is having a 8 gb ram but available available ram is only 2 gb so 6 gb taken by your system 6 gb are taken by your system so what to do Things are like this, guys. Lot of people don't maintain a computer in a proper way. That's why available RAM is very less. Just like me. OK. So look at here. I have a 12 GB RAM. Almost like a 50 GB of RAM will is taken. Why it is taken? Look at here. My Teams is consuming. Chrome is consuming. WhatsApp is consuming. Edge is consuming. See, like this. You can see the different process is consuming my RAM. The reason is because of I'm using computer here. A lot of unnecessary applications also running. So you can see magic plus helper. 
which is I'm not using it is also. I think it is my very old Motorola or a Lenovo mobile phone. Okay, it is related to that one. Okay, so like this. Mm. What I'm trying to say is, so compulsory check the startups, check the task manager startups. So check all your uh, current process. Okay. So what to do? How to gain more RAM? More available RAM. Okay. So for example, what um, how much your RAM is there? So it is not okay with that. So that's the important is available RAM is required for a virtualization. How to gain more RAM? So look at here. Better disabled unnecessary startups. Okay. So go to task manager, go to startup, disable it. Simple right click disable. So you can see this is enabled right click disabled like that. OK. So I disabled so many things. If you see you torrent uh, CC cleaner. OK, Facebook game room free download manager. I cloud drive. Uh, I cloud photo library. You can see this is battery management. OK, Microsoft Edge is enabled. It is also not required. You can disable it also. I, I again enabled my Microsoft Teams because when I start my laptop automatically Teams will be start. What is these startups? If I enable all these startups, so I have to woke up at morning six o'clock and I have to start my laptop. Then it will be open at nine o'clock. Okay, so even though last time, so one of one of our student, uh, so 16th batch I think, uh, she got a problem like a, her RAM is very less. RAM is very less. So 8 GB RAM, but available RAM is 2 GB only. I don't understand why 2 GB. Then I check it. She has a, a five or six startups only. That is everything will start when you see startup. What is the startups? You start your computer automatically. These process also start so it will consume your ram for example you can see there's a cc cleaner is running it consumes some ram even you are not running an application but it consumes some ram like this disable unnecessary startups uninstall application if not required are um, no longer use. You use certain application earlier days. You think it is very important. Now it is no longer use it. Then you can able to uninstall it. So I am having so many applications. See, see, this is Xming is a small application. So with different work is there. So uh, I'm not using for so many.
హలో సార్ కెన్ యూ ఎబుల్ టు సి మై స్క్రీన్ ఎస్ సార్ ఎస్ సార్ సో కాల్ డ్రాప్ సడన్లీ ఇట్ ఇస్ కట్ క్లోజ్డ్ what i am trying to say last point guys check your available ram okay you have a very good ram but your available ram is very less because of your startups because of your application and don't open multiple applications so look at here my available ram is check it 5.8 it is showing now instead of gaining it is losing so i am opening so many things okay i'm opening so many tabs here so what happens like this yeah it is very good this my ram will be availability is reduced so to gain a ram so close anything which you are no longer required okay so close things which no longer required see available ram is increased so if you are compulsory for example whatsapp is yesterday it is not open that's why i am able to send anything i can't able to share anything hello sir yeah tell me yeah tell me guys can screen you screen is not visible sir screen is not visible what happened to my network today yesterday i was in office there internet problem so today i came to home and there is another problem <laughs> Now, visible sir visible right okay okay good so you can see it is when i close the tabs i gain a some available ram but some are compulsory means teams has to run without a teams we can't conduct a class right so whatsapp is compulsory um, chrome with some one or two tabs are compulsory so like that if you are compulsory to run if you are not required to run in a background so some people open a, uh, so many things in a background and then they they don't close it they said like a system is slow so compulsory check it close mm close windows if not required okay so this is the way to gain little bit ram so this is the what i am trying to say guys how much ram you have that is important but way more important is the availability of ram is important so availability of ram your ram physically installed ram your availability ram okay and your bios settings are important for this virtualization part what is this virtualization i will tell and i will give you a break okay what is this virtualization part okay so here look at here this is my laptop so this is my laptop okay this is my laptop so in my laptop what operating system i am running windows 10 right now <clears throat> how to show you a practical okay so the practical is like a on a windows server okay on windows server how to do show you a practical in the server in the server practically i have to show you how to install and all just for example so how many computers are required minimum one computer is required i required one computer next so server is there i need a client right without a client what you do with the server now i install a i cannot make my laptop as a client okay because there is a lot of complexities are there so i need a windows server then i need a windows 10 i 
as a client. 2016 or 2019 as a server and 10 as a client. So I need and two computers now. OK, so one more computer. This is one more computer. Now this practical is completed. So what to do now? So the, so the point is. I want to show you a server. OK, I can show you my Windows 10 for a basic things. No problem, little bit. OK, there is also problems are there, but normally I'm telling. So I want to show you Windows Server. How to show how to buy a computer. First of all, right? I have to buy a one computer and install a Windows Server in it. Install a Windows Server in it. Then I have to put a camera because I can't share always a screen, right? So I have to put a very good camera focus on it. So then I connected and I, you can able to see it. Now I need a client. Then I will go to market. Purchase another computer or a laptop. Install with the Windows 10. And make it as a client. Now I have to buy two cameras merge here. Or one camera shifting from here to there. Then I have to do practical. I, I, I can able to show you. Now this part is completed. Next one is. I, I need to show you a Linux practical. Then what I have to do? have to format my systems with the Linux. I have to format my systems with the Linux. Then I can able to show you Linux practical. So Linux screen sharing is not easy. So we have to use again uh, focus uh, and with the camera. So then we have to put under camera. I have to do practical so you can able to see from there. Right? So this is what we are doing. Morning batch Windows practical. Windows server practical or Windows practicals. Afternoon batch Linux. Then what to do? I can't uh, format uh, in an uh, afternoon, right? So every time every day I have to format it. That is not good, right? So what to do? Even though we got this problem when I working in a first organization itself like a jet king, I worked there. I got a problem. The senior the is an even at even a not even a senior, but he learned already in Jet King and he came. There is a guy. OK. Um, so. Uh, thing is. Uh, he teach evening time, so Windows Server. Morning batch having a Windows 10 Windows Vista operating system. Evening batch having a Windows Server 2008. So what will happen? He format all the systems with the Windows 8. In morning, the guy will format all the Windows 2008, sorry, Windows 2008, and uh, install a Windows Vista. But uh, I'm often my batch only Windows Vista batch, so I I I install Windows Vista. Evening Windows 2008 server. Okay. So what happened here? So daily we are format. For every batch, there is a one format at least. It will take another uh, uh, half an hour, one hour time. So what is the solution? So when I required, I can use a Windows Server, Windows Client. Two machines are required at a time, but I can't offer a buying a two computers. Next, I need a Linux system. OK, for a few practicals, we need a two Linux systems. Two Linux systems are required sometimes. Again, we can't add up like a one system, two, three, four, four computers I have to buy. Again, for a DevOps practical, I need another system. We don't have a DevOps practical here, but thing is DevOps practical. OK, so what happened? I have to keep. Increase my infrastructure. So each cost is there now at least 30,000. You have to invest a minimum 30,000. You have to invest. 30, 35,000 you have to invest on a new infrastructure. OK, you have to if you go with the minimum. Now the solution is virtualization. So how it is works. Plus everything is class only not a trial and uh, kind of stuff. Think is this is my laptop. My laptop having a hardware. 
OK, so hardware means I have a CPU. OK, and of course it is a 64 bit CPU. Earlier 32 bit also supporting that is different type of virtualization uh, that that's a different part. OK, so I have a 64 bit CPU is there. And I have a RAM. My RAM is 12 GB. OK, and availability is 6 GB minimum. And of course, disk space, hard disk space. These are the main three important factors. Of course, you have a motherboard, uh, other BIOS, and uh, everything is there. Of course, your networking is also there, and IC is also there. Okay, so this is my computer or a laptop. I installed with the Windows 10. So I'm telling you about my computer only not about a original virtualization kind of stuff. So my operating system, I have an operating system. Is Windows 10. Now. If you are having a Windows Pro, Windows 10 Pro or Windows uh, 10 Enterprise, you will get a Hyper-V feature. But here most of us having a home only. So mine is a home edition. OK. So I'm not talking about anything. Just window, you have a Windows 10. I am installing an application here. OK, this is simply a application. This is a, an application. The application name is here. I am using VMware. Workstation. I am using here VMware workstation. I will show you that one. So in this application, using this application, I create a virtual machines. I create a virtual machines as per my requirement. This is my virtual machine. In this virtual machine, I installed Windows Server. OK, in this virtual machine, I Windows, I installed Windows 10. OK. Windows Server 2019 I installed Windows 10. Now I require only these two machines currently, so I installed like this. So my RAM is available RAM. I'm talking about available RAM. So available RAM is 6 GB. OK, so I'll give 2 GB for each. I'll give 2 GB RAM for each virtual machine. So 2 plus 2. 4 GB will consume from here. OK. This 2 GB, this 2 GB totally become 4 GB will taken from your available RAM only. Right. So 2 GB RAM, 2 GB RAM or 1 GB RAM, 1 GB RAM. Or a 2 GB RAM, 1 GB RAM. So it depends upon in requirement. And available. So I will change my RAM capacities also. But here look at it is I am using an application called VMware Workstation. I create a virtual machines. OK, then I do my work. I will show you that practically. Now work is completed. Afternoon batch is Linux. Actually, they, they completed Linux, but example afternoon batch Linux. So I power off these virtual machines. I power off this virtual machines. Then I turn on this virtual machine. So this is contents Linux. I turn on this Linux and I show the Linux practical to them. Like this multiple virtual machines you can create it. We can install the operating system as well as per our requirement and we can run. Of course we cannot. Override our, our kind of stuff. OK, so make sure that Required disk space is also required because of these virtual machines. Are stores. In the your hard disk space only. So you require a hard disk space required hard disk space is required. Like a, a something around a 100 GB kind of stuff. Free space is required at least. 40 50 GB is required for now. OK and. Uh, RAM availability is also required for these practicals. These practicals. Okay. If less RAM available, so based on that, we can adjust. 
but think is for for these two practicals i said so guys tomorrow is a windows server then you have to go and buy new laptop or a new desktop and install windows server is it possible very difficult right so it's a more cost effective and uh, connections so again you have to buy a switch for a lan connection and all so there are a lot of challenges are there so now i will show you this is this is my vmware workstation pro it can run multiple guest operating system in same physical machine same physical machine we can run multiple guest operating system thing is we we'll create a virtual machine all operating system and use so this is the way okay virtualization it it use machines use physical machine resources like cpu ram hard disk and other things also it use your physical machine resources okay but it is independent or intact with a physical machine it means if you want you can delete it you can power on power off Okay, or you can delete. Actually, you can delete, and also you can move, copy virtual machines. Yes, OS running, OS operating system in physical machine. is host os os in virtual machine is called a guest os okay so different type of operating system windows linux unix okay different type of operating system different type of applications you can able to run in the virtual machines in the form of virtual machines so this is what i am trying to use it for normal systems for a normal systems like um on users physical machine means we are a users we are a normal clients okay so regular we are using a physical machine we are not in a enterprise okay user are a okay so in our pcs that is better in our our regular pcs or laptops now pcs or laptops not enterprise okay personal meaning is your personal personal pcs 
personal laptops. Use. We use. Applications. For virtualization purpose. So this application is called a hypervisor applications. Okay, hypervisor applications. So one is VMware is an organization. VMware is an organization which is providing VMware. Directly. So VMware is an organization. VMware workstation. VMware having lot of products. So we are using VMware workstation. VMware player. Because player is a free, it is a paid version. Paid means you have to pay for license. Only you will get a um, something around a 30 days trial version. You will get it. VMware is player. Next one is Oracle VM. Okay, Oracle VM virtual box. These are two are currently available in the market. Currently available in the market. Only VMware workstation virtual box. VMware player has a very less uh, options, but still you can able to use VMware player pre edition. So VMware. Uh, Oracle virtual box is a free edition, so it is same as a VMware workstation. Just I want to show you that advantages of virtualization. So look at here, guys. So I am going to um, this 13th batch. So in this one, this is the machine. I put a 2 GB RAM. In this machine is a Windows 10 Pro in is installed. First one. Second one is I, I installed a few things inside like a, um, um, like a Docker, Jenkins, GitHub, like that for a DevOps purpose. As I trial something like a mainly Docker purpose only. This is Windows 10. And this is this machine, Windows Server. This is Linux. This is Linux for a bash 13. These three things for a bash 13. This is for a bash 15. This is bash 16. Bash 15. See. I want to do some practicals on it, so I can't figure like this. This is for a to practice SCCM. Okay. This is for a SCCM. This is Windows 10. This machine is Windows 10. I installed with a uh, Oracle. Okay. This is for batch 7 on Linux. I try to install a DevOps, including in this Linux machine. It's a Linux that I installed a DevOps tools inside. So, like that, I have a lot of virtual machines you can see in my left side. Okay. So, including this. So bash 16 line X one. Okay. So thing is. You can create a based on your requirement, a different virtual machines. Virtual machine. Remember virtual machine is turn off. Don't con it. It won't. Consumes. Any kind of. Resources. Point is. When virtual machine is turn off or power off whatever the word you use it it don't consumes any hardware resources okay and next one is what are you do inside a virtual machine what are the things you do it in a virtual machines. This won't affect on your physical machine and your physical resources. Okay. 
for example i am running a application maybe this is sometimes a dangerous application it is you run that application you may get a ball so you run this application on your physical machine ball right so usually i install a, a oracle uh, products in my virtual machines i install a uh, oracle products in my virtual machine okay i install a oracle products are a devops related uh, tools in my virtual machines only why not in a physical machine recently i installed a git okay that's it only recently means four months back i installed a git for some work related but i don't install jenkins and all okay and that uh, last uh, three months back only i installed a oracle 21c in my laptop directly but before that one i always install i'll always install a, the test based all practical part in the virtual machines all because something goes wrong with this application it affects on my physical machine multiple times of installation of application what happens for example i install python in my physical machine i can't show you how to install python again right again i have to show in virtual machine not in physical machine so like that so there is multiple reasons why i am not using the up, certain applications on my physical machine why install that is also there is a reason is there okay guys so this is the point if vm is not running it is turn off it don't consume any hardware resources okay Stop running in vm not affect on your physical machine okay what are the application you are running i'm doing it even though see this eclipse is i didn't like to install it earlier so later only i installed and another i installed two three tools then it has become like this because of eclipse is not easy to remove there is no uninstallation string you can't uninstall the eclipse we can uninstall the uh, apache in advance but we can't uninstall the eclipse okay um oracle i said no oracle databases you can easy you can in install it but no uninstallation string you can't directly uninstall it there is a big headaches are there okay so like that so certain things you can the next one is box i took a lot of time oh it's almost more than 1 hour i take in 1 and a half hour i take in guys are understanding like uh, what is bios setting what is virtualization look at here this is vmware virtual box here i installed windows server here i installed windows client look at here i installed windows server windows client and this is gns3 machine okay so this is a vmware virtual box it's a free one we can use it as same thing okay i i don't use much about this uh, oracle virtual box kind of stuff uh, very less but you can use it condition is no condition condition for vmware workstation no condition for vmware virtual box what is the condition for vmware workstation it is a paid version so if in case if you are using uh, any keys from like you search in a google and find a key and you put a key okay so your laptop is a company laptop company means my laptop is my personal laptop laptop from uh, savantis i can't use uh, this crack versions or a certain keys versions kind of stuff i can't use it why because of the company uh, laptops are always accountable to to the uh, organization and uh, other organizations like the products you use in a company laptops must be 
genuine products either free products or a genuine products only not cracked products either you paid for our vmware workstation okay you are using a trial version okay but you are using a this kind of connection that is wrong okay so that is dangerous for uh, you your job your organization it's not good for that. so if you are using any uh, laptop or desktops which is provided by your organization okay it is not good uh, if you are using um, the uh, the cracked versions of vmware workstation or a stealing of um, license keys from others like that is not good okay so point is uh, uh, the point is yeah that's it you can use vmware player you can use vmware player or oracle virtual box kind of stuff okay but i try to use vmware workstation only because it's i use it for so many years then i'm more habituated to vmware workstation so i'm showing that one okay if anybody is interested uh, how to create a virtual machine oracle virtual box or your system is not supporting vmware workstation and you want to use oracle virtual box already there is a video for a, i created and i showed so you can go through it the last point today is not today now download i will show you how to download and install this vmware workstation so oh, virtual box also i will try so a download download is i will show you installation is very easy both this both i will tell how to download and i will give the links from where to download okay mostly it is free to download guys so vmware so simply put in a google vmware workstation download you can download latest version it is around a 16.2 or something it will be there it is searching so also oracle vm virtual box downloads okay so this is your uh, products so just uh, go to this so you can go to player also so you can go to player also then uh, if you want a player you can just download a player also so i'm going back once again the second link is for a oracle vm virtual box oracle vm virtual box this is the link for downloads in that one you have to choose if you are a windows host then choose windows host click on windows host it will download automatically So this is it. Or you can directly download for Windows. This is the for Windows 64 bit. Directly it will download. Okay. Next one is um, if you want, you can download this extension pack. Okay. Can download extension pack for your all supported platform. This is Oracle Virtual Box. No need to uh, buy a, any license. It's a free, open source type, so anybody can use it. You will get a source code if you want it also. This is source code. This is for a VMware Workstation Player. This is for a Workstation Pro. you don't want to pay or uh, 
so don't worry about a payment if in case if you in case you you are system is not suitable like i said now so you got a laptop from your organization you are working in some organization for example in that cases you can't able to use it okay so in that cases you can go for a player still loading i think internet is guys can you able to see my screen yes sir Okay, okay, so anyway, it is taking time to load. I'll go for this link. This link is for a VMware workstation in Pro. This is the Pro evaluation. So already there is a trial version. OK, so you can see it is 30 days trial version you will get it. OK, so OK, you can start working on it. No need to do anything. So your system is not Linux. Your system is Windows. So click on download now directly it will download. OK, you no need to log in anything. OK, no need to log in. Just click on download now. You will download this package. OK. Click on download now. Where is it? So we are we are using for Windows. For Windows. You go to for Windows and click on download. I am searching for a player. The player is not yet open. It is also maybe same thing only. Install Pro automatically will get a player. Automatically, you will get a player. But if you download a player, so you will get a player only. This is VMware workstation downloading. Next one is your Oracle virtual box download. Okay. Okay. So totally. So I I continuously taking guys uh, because mind is also not. <laughs> So first one is check your RAM, make sure your availability RAM. Second one is make sure your virtualization is enabled. If it is not enabled, if it is not enabled, try to enable it. Next, if you got a BS body, don't worry. So make it one at one one restart. So second time it will automatically repair. OK, so if it is your if you don't get any problem, no problem at all. So that's a very simple. So what is virtualization? I told I want to run multiple machines in my physical machine. I need this virtualization concept. I can achieve this virtualization by installing applications by installing. Applications because we are using our own laptop, personal laptops, personal desktops, right? So in that cases we need applications. VMware workstation is a 30 days trial player is a free. OK. VMware uh, virtual box is free. Even though it is a paid version, better to go for this one only. Because you got a 30 days free trial version. I will tell afterwards personally like okay, what to do with this one. And you don't want to use this one or not suitable for this machine. Or if you like to use Oracle virtual box, you can use it. And already I forward a video. So how to install a VMware workstation guys. So in that cases, it's just a player is open. So try for a Windows. Okay, so you can click on download, you will get it. So this is the finally download kind of stuff. Installation. So when you say installation,
when you go to the installation, so installation for a Oracle virtual box, you have to check everything. That's it. So no problem for a installing VMware virtual box. First one. What I said, there is no problem to install VMware virtual box. Because next, next, next. But when you are installing VMware workstation, there is a check marks are very important. So compulsory uh, how to because I can't uninstall and install a, uh, a VMware workstation for you. We'll try. I try to find any settings. No installation, I think. So world video is will be there. Yeah, here it is. Uh, I think this link having a uh, installation. It is uh, B13 only. No, uh, recently. Uh, this is the point. Very old days only. I showed how to install. So only one point I want to show you. There's a check marks are there. I, I removed a virtual old virtual machine. So installing new one. Then we'll see. So this is starting. Here I showed how done, guys. Check it. First is license agreement. First is check the license. Then make sure that so this check mark is there. This check mark is not there. Okay. So make sure if you are able to see. This check mark is a unchecked. First is uncheck. Second one is check. Okay. Second one is check. Okay, remember that one. So in a custom setup, compulsory go for uncheck this enhanced keyboard must be unchecked. Second one is checked. This is also uncheck it. This also better uncheck it. If you we are using a paid version, if you are using paid version, then you can use it. No problem for me, but otherwise better to uncheck it. See the uncheck marks and check marks compulsory. So this is you can use check marks only because it create a desktop icon. That's it. OK, if you check or not check, so directly it is. If you check it, it you can able to easily open from your desktop. 
once it is installation is completed. OK, so you can see it will take time. So don't touch and don't do any other things. Don't restart meanwhile. OK, so let it install peacefully. Now finished, so don't click on finish. Go to license. And you have to enter the key. So when you purchase, you got a key, right? So enter the key. So obviously you will get a license. So that is fine. Okay. So I, I'm also sharing this link to you. In the description. Okay. So not description directly I'm sharing to you. OK, so how to download an installation? You can try and uh, things OK. What is the title of this video? You can find uh, go through uh, links in the description is there. That's it. This is how to download an installation of VMware Workstation. Of course, you can find how to install a virtual box. If you have a doubt how to install the virtual box also there. So that's it. The first point today. First point today is. What are the things you have to check it? Make sure if it is there or not. So make sure guys first check the virtualization is enabled or not. OK, first is virtualization is enabled or not. Next check the availability of RAM and keep it in your mind. Next download VMware Workstation 16 Pro. Download it and. Install it, so already I told how to install it. This is the link. It is there. OK. Hmm. Guys understand uh, what are the things you have to do now? Or maybe afternoon. Check the virtualization is enabled or not and download. VMware workstation. And install it. Of course, I will tell uh, after break what to do next things. OK. This time stop recording.